Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is probably going to be at least a two-part series, maybe three, on the sword. The sword. So, there's a physical aspect to a sword, as you would imagine, because that was one of the common weapons until gunpowder and rifles were, cannons and rifles were invented. Matter of fact, uh, pistols used to be called hand cannons. Yeah. But yeah, a sword was a major weapon up until uh, firearms. So, and it was a major weapon for, oh, I don't know, thousands of years. Now, you may not know it, but when you read the Old Testament, yeah, let me take a look. All right, let's take a look. Uh, okay, we're going to take a look at 1 Samuel chapter 3. I guess we're going to read the whole chapter. You know, if you've never bothered to read the Old Testament, you are really lacking spiritual knowledge, really. It's very important. The Bible is one book, and the Old Testament is just as much our book as anything else. I mean, it's, you know, the churches will want you to think that it's, uh, you know, the Old Testament is for the you-know-whos, and the New Testament's for the church, but they're lying because they don't even know who god's people are well actually i think they do they just do their best to hide it from you because they're a bunch of wolves all right first samuel chapter 13 and i'll tell you what the more i look at numbers in the bible i think that the bible when it was divided into chapters and verses with the numbers and everything that whoever did it was guided by the Holy Spirit. I really do, because um, certain numbers pop up all the time. Like the number one, number three, number seven, 10, 12, 40, 24. Those numbers pop up a lot, and they have reference to the Lord. And then there's other numbers that pop up, like 6, 9, 11, 13, uh, especially 6, right? 666? Six, six, six. Oh, yeah. Uh, usually when those numbers pop up, it's something that's not good. So, I mean, you know, take a look at Revelation 13. But here, here we got 1 Samuel chapter 13. 1 Samuel, chapter 13. Samuel was a prophet of the Lord. And uh, he was the prophet with uh, Saul, the king, who was the king before David. And uh, the Lord picked him, but he was... He started off pretty good, but you know... Uh, when you become king and you let it go to your head, well, you got a problem. All right, so let's read 1 Samuel chapter 13. Uh, Saul reigned one year, and when he had reigned two years over Israel, Saul chose him 3,000 men of Israel, whereof 2,000 were with Saul in Mishmash in Mount Bethel, um, you know, Bethel, Beth means house, 
and El has reference to God or Lord. So Bethel basically means house of God. So keep that in mind. Uh, every time you hear a, somebody called Beth, a, you know, female, um, it's Hebrew word. You'd be surprised how many Hebrew words are in English. You'd be surprised. And they want us to think, uh, oh no, that's that doesn't that doesn't apply to us. Church, the church is in Israel. Liars. Of course, the church is Israel. Israel's the church, and the church is Israel. Unless, of course, you want to think the Antichrist are Israel. Well, you can believe that if you want. And you can worship the man of sin when he comes. Because all your TBN preachers are going to be falling all over themselves, uh, proclaiming that he is the Messiah, come to save us. And you could take his mark, and you can go to hell as far as I care. Uh, now I'm not talking to you listeners. I'm talking to the, the, I guess I call them, loosely call them churchgoers because we don't, you don't go to church. Believers are the church. Like I said, you, you can go to the garage, but that doesn't make you a car. So, all right. So 2000 were with Saul and Mick. Mishmash in Mount Bethel, and a thousand were with Jonathan and Gibeah of Benjamin, and the rest of the people he sent every man to his tent. And Jonathan, now remember, Jonathan was the son of Saul, and he was, him and David were very, very close friends. I mean, very close friends. I mean, have you ever had a friend that was closer than a brother or a sister? I mean, that's how they were. And of course, the you-know-whos will tell you, oh, they were homo you-know-whats. No, I don't think so. Verse 3, And Jonathan smote, he attacked and destroyed. And Jonathan smote the garrison of the Philistines that were in Geba. And the Philistines heard of it, and Saul blew the trumpet throughout all the land, saying, Let the Hebrews hear. Now, if you remember, uh, Goliath was a Philistine. Yeah, the giant that uh, David slew. Yeah. But I don't think, from my study and understanding of the scriptures, not all the Philistines were giants. Now, if you know what happened in Genesis 6, and you compare that with Job 38, the sons of God had to be angels. I've got an entire playlist on that that proves it beyond a shadow of a doubt. And when you know that what angels, that male angels could... Uh, do the dirty deed with human women and have kids. Of course, the modern demon nominational preachers will tell you, oh no, that's not possible. You know, believing men married unbelieving women and they had giants for children. And then God said, go and kill them all. What, kill them all? Why are you going to kill them all? Because they had unbelieving mothers. Why don't you just send evangelists to tell them about the ways of the Lord, teach them the Ten Commandments. No, God said, go in and kill them, all of them. Go into the land and kill the Canaanites, of which the Philistines were a part of. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense, people. You know, but people don't use logic. They don't think it through. They don't bother to read. You know, it's like all they want to do is John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. He doesn't love this present world. You know, for God so loved the world. Loved. Past tense. He loved his original creation. He doesn't love what's this now. Jesus said, love not the world and the things that are therein. Boy, you don't hear that stuff, do you? No. 
Verse 4. Let the Hebrews hear. And all Israel heard say that Saul had smitten a garrison of the Philistines and that Israel also was had in abomination with the Philistines. So Israel was playing with the Philistines and their abominations, doing things that God hated. Sounds like uh, America today or UK or the European Union, you know, hey, we got to have uh, LBGT rights and uh, those kind of marriages and child sacrifices that we call abortion. And uh, yeah, you know, yeah, you get the idea? Yeah, there's no thing that's too evil for our people today or back then. Nothing, nothing changes. And that Israel also was had an abomination. Now, if you don't know what an abomination is, it's a, now all, everything is sin. An abomination is sin. But an abomination is a very, very special sin that God especially really, 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 really hates. I mean, God hates all sin. He hates stealing. He hates murder. But an abomination is the extra special super heavy duty industrial strength sin that he really hates so israel was doing the abominations with the philistines or you know so and the people were called together after saul to gilgal and the philistines gathered themselves together to fight with israel thirty thousand chariots Wow. So so Saul's got 3,000 men and they got 30,000 chariots, which are basically the armored tanks of their day, and 6,000 horsemen and people as a sand, which is on the seashore multitude. And they came up and pitched in mish, mishmashed eastward from Beth Aven. When the men of Israel saw that they were in a strait, for the people were distressed. Then the people did hide themselves in caves and in thickets and in rocks and in high places and in pits. Yeah, they were outnumbered uh, 10 to 1, just, just chariots. And they were outnumbered 2 to 1 and just horsemen. Uh, uh, they're, they're in a bad way here. So they're like hiding. And some of the Hebrews went over Jordan to the land of Gad and Gil Gilead. As for Saul, he was yet in Gilgal, and all the people following followed him trembling. And he tarried seven days according to the set time that Saul had appointed. But Samuel had uh, came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. So Samuel was the priest, and he's supposed to do uh, sacrifices unto the Lord. Okay. He was a, of the tribe of Levi, the, 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 the tribe of the priests. And Saul, Saul was of Benjamin. Saul was of the same tribe as, uh, the apostle Paul. And if anybody tells you Paul was not an apostle, um, my suggestion is rebuke them, tell them to go to hell and uh, run away as fast as possible because they have no discernment whatsoever. Zero. And Saul said, bring hither a burnt offering to me and peace offerings. And he offered the burnt offering. Now, uh, here it is Saul, King Saul, a Benjamite of the tribe of Benjamin, is performing the office of a priest, something he's not allowed to do. And he thinks this is going to be pleasing to the Lord. Boy, I don't think so, buddy boy. Uh-uh. They ain't, ain't going to cut it. I mean... 
I, it's just, you know, it's sacrilege to the Lord. Verse 10. And it came to pass that as soon as he, Saul, had made an end of offering the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came and Saul went out to meet him that he might salute him. Greet, you know, a greeting. That's what a salute is. You ever in the military, you salute officers, you're greeting them. And Samuel said, What hast thou done? What did you do? And Saul said, Because I saw that the people were scattered from me, and thou camest not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Mish Mishmash. Therefore said I, The Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made supplication unto the Lord. I forced myself thereof and offered a burnt offering. And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. So basically the Lord's saying uh, through Samuel that Saul's kingship is going to be taken away. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord hath sought him, a man after his own heart. And that was David, people. The Lord said that David was a man after God's own heart. And the Lord hath commanded him to be captain over his people, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. The Lord gave you uh, instructions and you didn't follow them. Verse 15, And Samuel arose and got him up from Gilgal unto Gi uh, Gib Gibeah of J Benjamin. And Saul numbered the people that were present with him, about 600 men. Wow, they had 3,000, now they're down to 600. And Saul and Jonathan his son and the people that were present with him abode in Gibeah of Benjamin. But the Philistines encamped in Mishmash, and the spoilers came out of the camp of the Philistines in three companies. One company turned under the way that leadeth to Oprah, Oprah Winfrey, unto the land of Shul. And another company turned the way to Beth Horam. And another company turned to the way of the border that looketh to the valley of Zeboim toward the wilderness. Now, why am I reading all this? Well, verse 19, this is, this is the reason I'm reading all this. Now, there was no smith found throughout all the land of Israel. What, 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 what? A smith? You mean Smith and Jones? And no, like a blacksmith. Yeah, you know, a blacksmith worked with uh, metal. Uh, iron and steel. That's what a blacksmith did. They had blacksmiths uh, in the Old West. You know, 100, 150 years ago, they had blacksmiths that would make horseshoes for horses, which was a, a, pri a very important mode of transportation back then. Think about it. That's what it's talking about here. You ever heard of an Aerosmith? And no, I'm not talking about Steven Tyler. You know, Toys in the Attic. No, boy, I listened to that song a lot back in them back in the day. But uh, an Aerosmith was somebody that made arrows. Yeah, for you know, bow and arrow. Now there was no Smith found throughout all the land of. Israel. Israel didn't know how to make or do blacksmithing. For the Philistines said, lest the Hebrews 
make them swords or spears. Wow. So the Philistines seem to have had a corner on the market, I guess you could say, a monopoly on steel making. We're going to get back to that. But all the Israelites went down to the Philistines to sharpen every man his share and his coulter and his axe and his axe and his matok. Uh, evidently, these are agricultural tools. I don't want to get into it because they're not important. Um, and an axe, an axe uh, was a very important agricultural tool, but it could also be used for a weapon quite effectively. Um, the Vikings made very good use of axes. Matter of fact, some people think axes are a better uh, weapon than swords. I don't know. I've never had to deal with that kind of stuff. But uh, God said that Israel was his battle axe. A battle axe. You don't believe it? Let me look it up. Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 15 uh 19 i'm sorry verse 19 jeremiah 51 19 the portion of jacob now remember jacob's name was changed to israel he had 12 sons the portion of jacob is not like them for he is the former of all things and israel is the rod of his inheritance the lord of hosts is his name you know jacob and Israel are synonymous. Verse 20. Thou, Israel, thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. Whoa, Israel. God says, Israel, thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms. And with thee will I break in pieces the horse and his rider. And with thee will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider. Whoa. All right. So let's go to back to 1 Samuel 13, um, verse 20. But all the Israelites went down to the Philistines to sharpen every man a share and his coulter and his axe and his mattock. Yet they had a file for the mattocks and for the coulters and for the forks and for the axes and to sharpen the goads. So it came to pass in the day of battle. All right, Saul's getting ready to have a fight with the Philistines. So it came to pass in the day of battle that there was neither sword nor spear found in the hand of any of the people that were with Saul and Jonathan. But with Saul and with Jonathan, his son was there found. So only Saul and Jonathan had metal, sword, and spear. Everybody else had wooden weapons. You know what happens if you got a broom handle and somebody's got an axe? Uh, your broom handle is going to be in two parts, probably. So... And the garrison of the Philistines went out to the passage of Mishmash. There you go. Oh, and by the way, if you don't believe in giants roam the earth, uh, you know, pictures can be faked. I understand that. And, uh, but you know what? They've been finding skeletons of giants all over the world. Every culture in the world has stories of giants. You ever heard of Jack and the Beanstalk? Oh yeah, the Cyclops. Uh, you know, and you can look at old newspapers from like, oh, I don't know, 100, 110 years ago, where they reported before the you-know-whos took over everything, 
where they report that uh, giant skeletons were found. Um, the Museum of Science in uh, what they call Louisville, Kentucky, spelled Louisville, but everybody pronounces it Louisville, had a giant skeleton on display and then it's been removed. And there's people that have claimed and had pictures that they had discovered a giant skeleton, dug it up, and then somebody like the Smithsonian comes in, offers them a huge amount of money for it, promising them they'll, it'll be on display and they'll get credit for it. They get the money and the skeleton is never exhibited, hidden away. So anything that would prove the Bible true, they, uh, let's just say they destroy the evidence. You know, when the military, the U.S. military went into Iraq, do you know they destroyed a lot of the ancient sites? Things that would probably prove the Bible true. They couldn't believe it. People were like, why are we destroying all these ancient sites? You know, archaeologists would love to look at this. And I've heard this firsthand from people that claim they were in the military over there and Air Force and what have you. They just blew them up. So, yeah, anything that would prove the Bible true, no, we can't have that. So, all right. So, uh, all right. So, I've got an entire playlist on giants in the Bible. I mean, it, it just proves that what the fallen angels did. Now, with that in mind, some of the greatest Bible scholars that I know, living today and in times past, in veiled language, Do not believe that Cain was fathered by Adam. This is possibly, well, possibly the most hated Bible doctrine by the denominational preachers. They will do anything and everything in their power to dispute this. And they'll usually go to Genesis chapter 4 and verse 1 and they'll say, well, and Adam knew Eve his wife and she conceived and bare Cain. And Eve said and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Is Adam the Lord? Is Adam the Lord God? Hmm. The Bible says that uh, not as Cain who was of that wicked one. When you read about the wheat and the tares, the weeds, the enemy that sowed the tares was the devil. So if Cain was of that wicked one, is Adam the wicked one? Well, if you think Adam fathered Cain, then yeah, he would have to be the wicked one. Adam's the wicked one. But if you don't think Adam's the wicked one, then yeah. Now, if angels can play around in Genesis 6, wouldn't Satan have wanted to pollute the bloodline as early as possible? You know, think about it. God had a chosen people. Some say Satan has a chosen people. Identifying them would get your channel deleted very, very, very quickly. But if you look in the Old Testament, nowhere are any of Cain's descendants talked about nicely. Not one. So, all right, so in Genesis chapter 4, Uh, you read about Cain slaying Abel.
And uh, so let's take a look at that. All right, let's take a look at uh, Genesis 4, verse 8. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass that uh, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him, killed him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Hey, uh, God, it's not my day to watch him. And he, the Lord, said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And now art thou, Cain, art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. Woo! When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. So, when you are a farmer and you plant all the crops, you are not going to get a harvest. I have cursed the ground at your hands, is the Bob commentary there. When thou tillest the ground, you know, till the ground, it shall not henceforth yield under thee her strength. You ain't going to get no fruit. Is there a group of people on the earth today who are never, ever, ever farmers? Never get their hands dirty uh, planting crops. If you can find such a group of people, you will know who the children of Cain are. God cursed them. So if you could never be a farmer... What would you have to do to be, to, you know, be able to get food? Well, you'd have to steal it or kill other farmers for it and steal it, you know. Or you could create money for goods and uh, exchange money for food. So what kind of what kind of businesses would you have to be in to uh, to do this? Hmm. Oh, uh, let's see. Banking, insurance, uh, be merchants like you know store owners like maybe Sears or Amazon or you know. Uh, that would be my guess, right? You know, sell people things. Uh, yeah. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond thou shalt be in the earth. You ever heard the expression, the wandering you-know-who? Uh, yeah. Why a fugitive and a vagabond? Why? Because they get kicked out of everywhere. They wander around. You know, they, they can't grow any food, so they got to move around. And Cain said unto the Lord, Gee, I'm sorry I killed Abel. No, he didn't say that. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I could bear. Oy. And then a they, yeah. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid. And I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain. A mark. The mark of the beast. Because Cain was a beast. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. Chaplain Bob, what was this mark? I have no idea. The Bible doesn't tell you. Some people say it's a prominent 
uh, let's just say it's right in front of your nose. I don't know. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife. Wait a minute. There was Cain and Abel, Adam and Eve, and here it is. Cain's got a wife. Where'd this come from? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. Some people will say that Cain married a daughter of Adam and Eve or a sister uh, you know I don't know but uh, if you read if you read us uh, Ezekiel chapter 31 you will read that the Assyrian was in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve I got a Bible study on it called, Were There Other Races Before Adam and Eve? Or With Adam and Eve? Ezekiel 31, boy, I'll tell you what, modern day so-called churches and pastors uh, avoid that like the plague. Oh, we're all from Adam and Eve. I don't think so. Maybe I'll uh, do Ezekiel 31. I'll, I'll probably post a link to I'll, I'll put that in my community page. How's that? Maybe I'll put a link in the... Um, when I put the put this video up, you can click on it. So, where did, he, where did Cain get a, a wife from? And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch. Uh, there were two Enochs. And he built a city. Wait a minute. Cain, his wife, and Enoch. You got three people and you're going to build a city? You're going to build a city for three people? I don't think so. And call the name of the city after the name of his son, Enoch. And unto Enoch was born Irad, and Irad begat Mahujael and Mahujael begat Methuselah, and Methuselah begat Lamech. And Lamech took unto him two wives. The name of the one was Ada, and the other uh, the name of the other was Zillah. And Ada bare Jabal. He was the father of such as dwell in tents, and of such as have cattle. Uh, he had to be a cattle man because you can't be a farmer, so you're going to have to, you know, cattle. And his brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of all, such as handle the harp and organ. Huh, music. Well, guess what? When you read about uh, the fall of Satan... You find out, well, let's read it. How about Ezekiel 28? And by the way, people, I got an entire playlist on a commentary on the book of Ezekiel. Very important book. Uh, it's probably the wildest book in the Bible. Ezekiel 28, uh, 31 tells you about other the Assyrian in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. Doesn't say Adam and Eve were the parents of the Assyrian. But in Ezekiel 28, verse 11, we read, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus. And people will tell you, oh, well, this king of Tyrus is talking about a human. I don't think so. And say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Okay. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. So the king of Tyrus was in the garden of God? Really? He must have been living a long time. 
Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, the topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets, which is a musical instrument, and of thy pipes, pipes are an instrument, you know, uh, you ever heard of uh, wind instruments? Yeah. Like a flute? Yeah. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. In the day that thou wast created. In the day that thou wast created. Not born. Obviously, this is not a man from Adam and Eve's lineage. This is an angel. Verse 14. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. Covereth what? The throne of God. Wow. And I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. What man was upon the holy mountain of God? The answer is probably none. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. I think this is talking about Satan before he became Satan or just before. I think he was the uh, music director in heaven. That's what I think. Satan was in the Garden of Eden. And he handled musical instruments. So why is it that the children of Cain... Like Genesis 4, 21. And his brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of all that uh, such as handle the harp and, or harp and organ. A harp is a stringed instrument. Wow. And Zilla, she also bare Tubal Cain. Two ball cane. Do you know that's a uh, that's a code word in the Masonic Lodge? Two ball cane. Why would they pick a two ball cane for a code word? And Zilla, she also bear two ball cane, an instructor, an instructor, a, a, a teacher, right? An instructor of every artificer. Artificer, A-R-T. We're not just talking about a worker. We're somebody that's talking about somebody very skilled. An artificer is somebody very skilled. An instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. 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 And what happens to iron when you mix it with carbon, like charcoal or coal? It turns into steel. Steel is 10 times stronger than iron. Yeah. 10 times stronger. Do you know that modern architecture with these high-rise buildings would have been absolutely impossible without steel? Wouldn't be able to do it. So... And the sister of Tubal Cain was Nema. Do you know that in Japan, they've been making steel swords for thousands of years. Some people will say, that's not true. Well, tell that to the Japanese. Don't tell me. And you know who taught them how to make steel swords? And let me tell you something. Japanese steel, even the old stuff, very labor intensive, but it's very, very high quality, very high quality. Their stuff that's thousands of years old is, has a quality that's uh, comparable to what the best steel that you can make today. I'll tell you what, you want some good kitchen knives, 
you buy some high-end Japanese steel uh, from, uh, I forget the name of the area, but yeah, it's good stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, very good stuff. And guess who they say taught them how to make steel swords? The legend has it, it was the gods, plural, the gods that came down from heaven, taught them how to make steel swords. Hmm. Wow. Don't believe me? Look it up. I'll tell you what. There's, they make some quality steel. And even today when metallurgists, a metallurgist is a uh, somebody that's well-educated in metals. When they look at the old Japanese swords, they're, uh, they're amazed at the quality. Yeah. Tubal Cain, an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron, and the sister of Tubal Cain was Nema. So, just think. The enemies of Israel had swords, and Israel didn't. That is one heck of an advantage. You know, Israel's running around with wooden sticks, and the enemies of God are walking around with steel weapons. Yeah. But, when Israel was obedient to the Lord, doing what the Lord wanted, he destroyed the enemy. And when our people are disobedient, he allows the enemy to destroy us. Look around, people. Look around. It's happening today. Absolutely. It's happening right now. We're in a war and people don't even know it because they're fools. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They're corrupt. That's the Bob paraphrase. Well, let's go to Genesis chapter 3. Now, I got an entire Bible study on Genesis chapter 3, what really happened. And if you think a snake is hanging from an apple tree telling Eve, take a bite, take a bite. Well, You'd be wrong, but yeah. Um, all right, so I guess everybody knows the story about Adam and Eve, uh, what they did. So let's go to verse 14, Genesis 3, verse 14. We're going to read this till the end of the chapter. And the Lord God said unto the serpent. Now, if you don't know who the serpent is, go to Revelation chapter 12 tells you that old serpent called the devil uh, and Satan. Duh. No, you got to watch the Jehovah's Witnesses where they have a picture of naked Adam and Eve hanging, you know, and a snake hanging from the apple tree. No, I don't think so. I think uh, Eve was talking to a thing of beauty, a shining angel, That's, that's, that's what I see. But then again, I'm not trying to deceive anybody, but you know. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. And upon thy belly shalt thou go and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Listen to this carefully. And I will put enmity. What is enmity? It's extreme hatred. And I will put enmity between thee, Satan, the serpent. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. And between thy seed, children, and her seed, children. Read the wheat and the tares. The parable of the wheat and the tares. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. Now, I did a Bible study on that too. 
Yeah. He's starting to get it. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. And unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply the sorrow of your toothaches because you ate the apple from the tree with the serpent. Uh, no, wait, no, that's not what, that's not what he said. Oh, wait, I'm wrong. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. You ever heard of conception? It has reference to a man getting a woman pregnant. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. What? Oh, wait a minute, Chaplain Bob. Eve ate an apple and God's cursing her with sorrow and pain and conception and childbirth. It don't make any sense. Well, it makes sense to me. Maybe you're the one confused and I'm just pointing it out. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children and thy desire, Eve, shall be to thy husband. Who was her desire to before her husband? Oh, don't ask those kind of questions. And, the, and thy desire shall be to thy husband and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow thou shalt eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Was she the mother of all living? Is she the mother of goldfish? Uh, no. Was she the mother of, of deer? No. Uh, was she the mother of gray whales? No. All does not always mean all. What about the Assyrian in the garden? In Ezekiel 28, I think it was. Or was it 31? I forget. No, I don't think so. She was a mother of all living Adamites. And by the way, Adam is a racial description. And they've deleted that since the uh, modern concordances and dictionaries have come out since the uh, late 80s. Yeah. I bought a modern Strong's Concordance and it completely changed the definitions as when I first came to the Lord. Completely changed it. Oh, Adam, the first man. No, it was a racial description. Uh, take a look at my white, uh, color white in the Bible, Bible studies that I just did. Yeah. And Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. Was this coats of skins of what? Uh, animals? Did God do an animal sacrifice and take the skins and, and gave them clothing? Ooh, I think so. I think this was the first uh, animal sacrifice. Can you imagine Adam and Eve, how horrified they were when God killed an animal to give them a covering? I think I'd rather have that uh, white robes in the book of Revelation that were washed in the blood of the Lamb, who is Christ Jesus. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil. To know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. 
You don't want to live forever in your fallen state. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims, a type of angel, and a flaming sword, and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. I hope one day the Lord gives me a flaming sword and tells me to go to town on all the evil in this world. I don't think there'd be too many things that would make me happier than that. You know, everybody wants a, a lightsaber of the Jedi in Star Wars, but I want a flaming sword. But hey, that's just me. So, all right, let's get going. Now, I was going to stop the Bible study right here, but... Uh, there's a thing called the law of first mention. So when you're looking up a word like sword, you go to a Bible lookup, find out the first place where it's mentioned, like iron, you know, you look up iron and the first place it's mentioned is Genesis chapter 4 and it's listed among Cain's descendants. Cain's descendants were never talked about nicely in the Bible, never coming to the Lord ever zero so but the law of first mention is what some people call it but when when you see something mentioned the first time in the King James Bible doesn't work with the other versions doesn't work stick with uh, the King James I know people will tell you don't do that either because you know they want you to buy the new and improved version written by the LBGT community. Did you know there's a Queen, Queen, Q-U-E-E-N, James Bible? They got rid of all those homophobic references in it. Yeah. Yeah, they'll tell you that King James was one of them. But uh, he, was a he had a wife and he had a kid, at least one. I'm not sure how many. And uh, his Bible said what to do with them. And uh, what's sad is that community knows what the Bible says to do to them, but Christians don't. Which is why they want to prevent a revival under, under no circumstances do they want to see a revival. And will do anything to, to keep it from happening. Yeah. But in Genesis chapter 27... Now, remember, God said he hated Esau. Why is that, Chaplain Bob? Oh, well, I got a Bible study on that. But long story short, Esau despised the gift of God. Can you imagine that? You buy somebody a gift and they just, they don't want it, throw it away. I don't want your stinking gift. Go away. Leave me alone. Uh, when's the next time you're going to buy him a gift? Uh, never. But not only that, Esau married into the Canaanites, which I believe the Canaanites were descended from Cain. But I can't prove it from the Bible because Ham, his wife, her lineage, her genealogy is not mentioned. And usually when the Bible's silent on a subject, you want to look into it. You know, it, it's to bring attention to that. But I suspect that uh, Ham's wife was of daughter of Cain down the line if you go back far enough. But I can't prove it. But after all, she married. She named her kid Cain and Cain and Cain and. They spell it a little different, but the sounding is the same. Cain Nin. Canaan. Why would you name your kid after the world's first murderer? I don't know. But Esau married a Hittite woman who was of the tribe of the Canaanites, of which the Philistines were all, they were all, they're in the same tribe. So here it is in Genesis 27. Jacob gets the blessing from 
uh, Isaac. Genesis twenty-seven thirty-eight, And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be in the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven from above. And by the sword, and by the sword shalt thou live. Esau is going to be a very violent person. And remember, the Bible says, uh, if you live by the sword, you'll die by the sword. I think that's in Revelation, if I remember correctly. And by thy sword shalt thou live, and shalt serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass, when thou shalt have dominion, that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, The days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then will I slay my brother Jacob. Do you know that Esau married uh, Ishmaelites? Ishmaelites are considered the lineage of modern-day Arabs. Yeah. Do they uh, do the Arabs live by the sword? I got a Bible study on that too. The Arab world in modern uh, in Bible prophecy. Boy, I got a lot of Bible studies, don't I? See, the Bible it's like a cloth woven; all the threads connect. So Esau was to be a violent man. Oh yeah, but Jacob was to have the blessing. And that's Jacob Israel, people. Jacob Israel. All right, well, I guess this is going to be part one. Um, like I say, anybody wants a uh, copy of all my work, let me know. Um, you know. And uh, we'll work something out. So... All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.